Hello again, and welcome back to another Clear Flight instrument flying video designed specifically for EASA and UK pilots. Today, we're diving into the world of standard instrument departures, also known as SIDs or SIDs. We'll use the Alpha Kilo India 2 Bravo departure from Accuary Airport in Northern Iceland as our example. But before we get started, make sure you're subscribed to our channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our upcoming EASA and UK instrument rating training videos. A standard instrument departure, or SID, is a pre-established, published procedure that helps pilots navigate safely from their departure airport and ensures a smooth transition from takeoff and into the en route airways system. Departures are generally considered to be the simplest instrument procedure. However, although they might not be as complicated as some instrument approaches, be sure to look over the departure plate in detail and read any notes and warnings as they may catch you out. Jumping into the cockpit now, and we'll look at this Alpha Kilo India 2 Bravo departure from Accuary Airport's runway 01. It's plate 10-3B, effective from the 27th of January. The airport elevation is 7 feet, and the transition altitude is 7,000 feet. There are a few notes to be aware of. Strict adherence within the limits of performance criteria is mandatory. The routes may additionally be supplemented by altitude and or flight level restrictions. If unable to comply with the SID, advise ATC prior to takeoff, and on initial call to Accuary Tower, state call sign, present position, intentions, and ATIS information received. Moving down onto the diagram, and I can see in the sector that I'm taking off in, and to the west as I depart, the minimum safe altitude is 6,600 feet. And to the east, the minimum safe altitude reduces to 5,500 feet. These SIDs require minimum climb gradients for the Alpha Kilo India 2 Bravo of 3.6%, which at my ground speed of approximately 100 knots gives me a minimum rate of climb of 365 feet per minute, which I'll round up and say I require a minimum climb rate of 400 feet per minute throughout the departure, which should be easily achievable. The routing for the Alpha Kilo India 2 Bravo, climb ahead to the Oscar Echo NDB, the frequency for which is 415, and is set active in my ADF, which coincides with D2.3 of the India Echo Yankee. The frequency for that is 119.9, and it's set in NAV2, with the DME set to NAV2. Then turn left, 357 degree bearing to the Hotel Juliet locator. The frequency for that is 319, and it's set in standby in the ADF. Continue on 357 degree bearing, Intercept Alpha Kilo India Radial 341, which I have set in NAV1, and the CDI course is set to 341. When passing 5,100 feet, turn right to the Alpha Kilo India VOR, climbing to the cleared altitude or flight level. And my altitude bug is set to my cleared altitude of 7,000 feet. Lastly, considering threat and error management for this departure, the obvious one that jumps out here is the high terrain at this airport. As I've said, initially in the departure, the MSA is 6,600 feet, and then once we've commenced the right turn and are routing to the Alpha Kilo India, the MSA decreases to 5,500 feet. These are high MSAs, given the airport elevation of only 7 feet, so in the event of any loss of power, or any other issues causing a reduction in the rate of climb, I will continue in the initial direction of the departure to the north-northwest, flying through the valley, remaining over the river until I'm able to rectify the issue, or climb above the MSA of 5,500 feet. All right, that's the departure briefed, so I'll get myself going now. Park brake off, smoothly select full power, and use rudder to maintain the center line. Rotate. And as I'm instrument flying, I'll look straight down at the attitude indicator. Initially, I'm just climbing straight ahead about 2 miles to the Oscar Echo NDB. The ADF needle is slowly starting to fall around to the left, which means I'm approaching the NDB, so I'll just hold my heading and wait for beacon passage.
passing the beacon now, and I'll turn to fly a track of 357 degrees. There's a crosswind from my left, so I'm expecting I'll need a heading of about 345. I can see the track diamond is just slightly left of 357, so I'm going to nudge the heading bug 2 degrees to the right to get that track diamond onto 357. And we can just tweak the heading bug by a degree or two now just to get that track diamond exactly where I want it. I'm flying to the next NDB now, so I'll click the ADF soft key. The standby frequency is already highlighted there, so I'll press enter to swap the frequencies over. So the next NDB frequency 319 is selected. I need to identify it and compare the Morse code to the plate to ensure both the beacon and my equipment are working correctly. Lastly, on the ADF display, I can see the ADF needle is pointing nicely on about 357 degrees, which is exactly what I need, so I'll just keep tracking 357 degrees to the Hotel Juliet NDB. As I track to this NDB, I can see the ADF needle is just slowly moving around to the left slightly. It's come onto about 352 degrees, which is about 5 degrees left of where I need it to be. I'll nudge the heading bug to the left and turn left to get the track diamond onto the left side of the ADF needle. That will then push the head of the needle to the right back onto my desired track of 357 degrees. The ADF needle's been pushed nicely back onto 357 now, so I'm going to turn to the right to get that track diamond back onto 357 degrees. And I'll hold my heading as we fly towards and over the Hotel Juliet NDB. I can see on the DME I'm about 10 miles from the airport, and the NDB is at 12.6 miles, so I've got about 3 miles to go. The ADF needle is starting to fall now, so I'll just hold my heading as I fly over, and now I'm into tracking away from this beacon on the same bearing of 357 degrees. I'm going to maintain this track until I intercept the Alpha Kilo India VOR radial. With the frequency 113.6 already selected in NAV1, I can see the VOR identifier Alpha Kilo India is displayed in green next to the frequency which means the G1000 has automatically identified it for me and there's no need for me to listen to the Morse code. Lastly, before I rely on the VOR for navigation, I'll double check that I've got the correct course of 341 set. I can see the course deviation indicators started to move in from the right there, so I'll keep holding this heading and wait until that CDI is centered, and then I'll turn to track the VOR. The CDI is centered now, so I'll turn left, and keeping in mind that there's a crosswind from my left, I'll turn past the head of the needle onto a heading that I think will give me a track of 341 to maintain this VOR radial. With the course deviation indicator centered now, I can simply find a heading that puts the track diamond on the head of the needle, and that should maintain this VOR radial nicely. I don't need the DME information from the India Echo Yankee at the airport anymore, so I'll press the DME soft key and change the DME over to NAV1 so that I have the DME distance from the same VOR that I'm tracking. Frequency selected, I'll press the DME button on the audio panel to ident it and confirm the DME is displaying a sensible distance. I've got a bit over focused on getting all the frequencies set there and I can see I've already passed the altitude of 5,100 feet. So I'm going to set the VOR course to a radial that will have me fly direct to the VOR 
and then commence a right turn to fly direct to the Alpha Kilo India VOR. I'm on the last leg of this departure now, and all I need to do is keep tracking directly to the Alpha Kilo India VOR, climbing to an altitude of 7,000 feet. So that's it for this departure, and that's about as complicated as any instrument departure ever gets really. Quite frankly, most departures are a lot simpler than this, with less turns and fewer beacons involved. Although flying departures might be relatively straightforward, it's crucial that you understand the rules and regulations surrounding IFR departures, particularly the weather minima and the departure alternate requirements. So, the first question is, what is the worst weather that you can depart in with an EASA or UK single pilot instrument rating? The answer is a 400 meter RVR. It's worth noting that cloud base is not considered for departure, so it could be overcast at 100 feet, but as long as the RVR is at least 400 meters and the airport has runway lighting, you can still depart IFR. However, you may have noticed that this 400 meter minimum departure RVR is lower than the minimum RVR for an instrument approach. Therefore, it may be possible for you to take off, but not be able to land, which leads us into departure alternates. The first question here is, when do you need a departure alternate? Well, quite simply, you need a departure alternate when you can't land back at your departure airport. This could be due to poor weather or because of landing performance limitations. And lastly, when selecting a departure alternate, there are two requirements that you need to check. First, the departure alternate aerodrome must be within one hour at your one engine inoperative cruise speed. And second, the TAF at your departure alternate must indicate that the weather will be above your approach minima at your ETA plus or minus one hour. So there you have it. That concludes our lesson on standard instrument departures and I hope you found this useful in your journey to becoming an instrument rated pilot. We've got a whole online course designed specifically for both EASA and UK instrument rating students that teaches you everything you need to know to pass your IR test. See our course and loads of other resources at clearflight.co.uk and we'll see you in the next video.